scripture lesson today comes from John, the 13th chapter, beginning at verse 31. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, You will lay down your will you lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Our gracious God, as we've read from your holy word, we pray that once more your spirit might bless and anoint. But Lord, you might take these words and use them, dear God, to challenge each and every one of us. We're so thankful for your great love that has brought us here. We're thankful for the heritage and traditions of this church and for our Christian faith. And we pray, dear God, once more we might understand the great joy there is in serving you. Guide and bless us with your presence, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. When I was growing up in the Ozark Hills, it was a rather simple life. My mom stayed at home and worked taking care of the family most of the time. And my dad was an electrician plumber in that small community. They'd never heard of a union. I can remember he used to make $1.25 an hour. And he later got a raise eventually to two fifty dollars an hour. Those days are long past. I always admired my dad. He was sort of the original MacGyver. He could take just about anything, an old washing machine or a refrigerator or stove, and he could find parts that shouldn't fit, but he made them fit, and they would work. My dad was uh, sort of a community fixture. He worked on about every person's appliances or plumbing at one time or another. My dad never sent a bill to anyone. When I was growing up, I remembered watching for him to come home after work. He didn't get off till 5 o'clock. He worked Monday through Friday and half a day on Saturday. You remember those days? And I would watch for him. And when he started coming around the corner, I always tried to be there because he would stop and let me get into the back of the truck and ride the rest of the way to the house. I miss my dad. It's been five years now. Jesus had been with the disciples. He had followed, they had followed him and he had been with them and they had gone through so much. And now, after this resurrection, this Easter, he says to them, I'm going away and you can't go. But we want to go. We want to be there. And Jesus says, no, I'm going away and you cannot go. You've got to stay here. And that's difficult to hear sometimes. It's difficult when we experience death in a family and we realize that loved one has gone on and we're here and we want to go so badly. 
Jesus as he was talking to the disciples, they must have wondered, well, what did we do all of this for if we can't even get to go, if we don't even have the ability to, to, to be a part of the promise? Why did we spend three years following you and now you've done all this great stuff and you're going ahead and we're still stuck here? Where's the payoff, Lord? And then Jesus reminds them that their new life, their life because of the resurrection is going to be different because he's giving them a new commandment and that is that they love one another and that they show the world their love through their love for each other and their love for the world. In other words, he even says that they're going to know that you are genuine not by how, build, how big you build your buildings, not by how much you give, not by how strict and how many rules you have. They're going to know that you're genuine by the way you love one another. What a commandment to be given. But you know, it's not a new commandment. It's a variation of what I think God started with in the very beginning that we as human beings learn to get along with one another and try to understand that through all of our differences, through all of those things that separate us, that if we're not careful, we come to the place where we build walls, pass policies, exclude people because they're not like us. They're different. And in fact, if you look at the Ten Commandments, if you look at the early rules and regulations that the Jewish people imposed upon themselves, it was because they were trying to build a better society, a better group, and it was for something bigger than just themselves. The, law, the, the commandment is, is really not new in some ways because it's as old as the beginning itself that God has from the very beginning promised that we might live in harmony with one another. But we're losing that because we have become so divided. Divided in our world and divided in our nation and yes, we can even be divided within the church. And so it is we struggle with what it means to love. Now, sometimes the idea, well, if you love someone, they'll always get what they want. You just do what they want you to do. We children, when I was a child, loved that part of it. When you become a parent, you realize that love may be saying no. Love may be saying, no, you can't do that because it's not ultimately good for what you need to be in your heart and in your life. And so you say no because you love someone. Now, it's much, much easier just to let everyone do what they want to do. It's much, much easier just to pull back and say, listen, you guys just do it yourself and don't involve me. But if you have understanding, if you have knowledge, if you have a experience, we teach our children not only through what we give them, but from what we deny them by saying no from time to time. It's an important part of life. And we need to learn to do that within our own world and to realize the things that we get so upset about perhaps aren't worth it at all. And in fact, this commandment that Jesus says that we're to love one another, if you look throughout history, have Christians always loved one another? Have we always loved the world? No, we haven't. Every religion has its dark side. Every religion has its bad element. Every religion has its fanaticism. And we are no exception. The question is, can we learn from that and come to a place where we understand that our, our survival, our ability to live as human beings depends not on our isolation, but on our ability to be in community with one another. And so it is that Jesus gives us this commandment that we're to love one another. But he goes even beyond that. You're to love one another as I love them. 
Lord, it just keeps getting harder and harder. You know, I can love you if I like you, but now Jesus is telling me i got to love you if I don't like you. Because Jesus loves you. And suddenly this whole commandment gets much more difficult when we understand what God is putting in front of us that we are actually told as Christian people that we are to love the people that we may not like, we may not approve of them, we may not agree with what they're doing and how they're living, but we've got to love them because that's what God tells us to do. And that's right. Because you see, we're not the judge. I'm not the final judge, God is. I can't look on a person's heart and tell you what's there, but God can. And God knows why we do the things we do, and there are people that have done horrendous things that they shouldn't have done, and the last thing they need is more judgment and condemnation from the church. They need love. They need to be challenged by the realization that together in a humanity and a community of faith, we can be better than we are now. And we are Christian people are challenged to love one another as Christ loved them. And sometimes it isn't easy. We then come to even a, perhaps even a more difficult part. And that's our being able to reach out of ourselves and to, to be in mission and ministry to others. And we do that because of Christ. I want you to raise your hands and keep them up if you've ever been on a mission trip. If you've ever been on a mission trip. If you've ever been a part of a food kitchen somewhere, I want you to raise your hand. If you've ever given a special offering to missions, raise your hand. That's what it's about. Jesus is saying, if you want to be a part of the family, if you want to be a part of the kingdom, if you want to be a Christian, that's not the rules and regulations that define you. It's what are you doing? How are you living your life? How are you helping others? How are you giving? And, you know, I just named a few of them. There are other ways in which you can be making a difference in a person's life. And I hope you will. perhaps the most difficult people that we have to learn to love are those within our own family. I'm not talking just about your family at home, although that's included. Sometimes it's easier to love the little African child than it is to love your brother or sister or your child because, you know, they're here and they're over there. I remember hearing a pastor say one time, I do not have any enemies outside the church. (laughs) If we're not careful, the church can be a very difficult place. In fact, I heard it or I read it several years ago, the church is the only institution where we shoot our wounded. We really don't give people much leeway we really don't tolerate much difference. We really don't put up with what we don't like and what we don't approve of. And we are quick to judge and quick to condemn and quick to withhold our love from one another. And that's so sad because we shouldn't be that way. And yet, I can hear people all the time talk about Oh, things that they don't like in the church. You know one of the things that I keep hearing? I keep hearing people say they don't like for me to talk about money. Well, get over it, folks, because I ain't quitting. Money is a part of how we express our commitment to God. We've got to learn to live with one another. And that means that within the family of God, within the church that the world is watching, as Gary wrote about in his article, and as the the waves that come out from our actions that Christian talked about, 
the world is watching and what are they seeing within us? First of all, are they seeing any sacrifice on our part? Do our friends out in the world know that there are certain things that we won't do because we're making a sacrifice for the church? Not only in our money, but also in our time. I can't do that. It's Wednesday night. I've got to practice. Or it's Sunday. I've got to go to, I'm going to church. Do our friends know that we have a commitment to something and because of that commitment, we're making a sacrifice, not only with our time, our money, our talent, our skills. We're sacrificing because God has sacrificed for us through Jesus Christ. We do that when we share. We sacrifice and we share. During the years that I've been with you, I have shared so much of my life. I'm sort of an open book in a way, and I, I want to be. I've shared my doubts. Remember the Sunday I said I didn't even want to be here? Yeah? <laughs> I said that, didn't I? I didn't even want to be here. I shared that with you. What are we sharing with one another? Are we sharing who we are in our faith? Are we sharing or are we sort of just setting back, standing back, judging? God wants us to be involved. And we do that through our groups and our Sunday school and our various activities. We share our lives. And then we serve. For at the end of the day, it's not the rules and regulations that have made us holy, but it's what we've done. It's how we've served. Not everyone can be the preacher, although we do desperately need more preachers. Not everyone can be the, the musician. Not everyone can be the teacher, but there are so many ways volunteering, serving, helping, how many of you are volunteering for the youth department? How many of you are volunteering for the children's work? How many of you volunteer? Oh, you said we got staff for that. No, we haven't. We've got staff to help lead it, but unless you volunteer, unless you're involved, unless you're serving, unless you're loving, and you do that in so many ways, then we're not going to succeed and our testimony is going to be hollow. We will simply be a museum where people come and relive the good old days. And that's not what God has called us to be. And so I challenge you this morning, as you think about who you are and where you are, remember the commandment that God gave to us. A new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.